Hello, hello, hello. Good stuff, good stuff. Good afternoon. It looks like Shu is in the house. Salgado Red is in the house. And Shu Vang, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And I can also see my sister from another mother is in there as well. Ruth! <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you so much. All right. My name is Prosper Taruinga, in case this is the first time you're encountering the Lunch and Learn, where we sit down for 30 minutes every single day. You can ask jo Joel, he'll tell you. All right. So we talk about uh, stuff that helps you make more money within your business um, with less struggle. Everybody wants to grow their business. Everybody wants to scale their business. Everybody really wants to do well. All right. Chris, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Joel, oh, I can't say your last name. You teach me later on when we do, um, you know, the, 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 the interview. I can't wait. I can't wait. You can tell I'm excited. All right. So Stephen Seddon is in the house as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Today's video is sort of a continuation from yesterday. And Chris is dancing. Yeah, we will be dancing um, soon. Today's video is a continuation from yesterday, guys. Obviously, um, you know, yesterday we talked about how to make 2018, um, you know, your best year yet. So normally after the videos, um, I either watch the video back or I get into conversations with people asking me what I meant or how I can help them, etc., etc. So yesterday I had about three people after the show asking me, now, how do I grow my business? Um, from where I am right now, I'm, I am, you know, working from home. I've got so many clients. How do I expand it from where it is now to maybe becoming a little bit bigger in the next year or so? So I put together 10 things that might also help you, um, in order to figure out how you two can actually scale your business in 2018, um, pretty much so that you, um, have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. All right. So as you would know, every entrepreneur, like maybe yourself, you've got different reasons as to why you started your business. All right. You've got different reasons as to what you want your business to go ahead and become. Do you know what I mean? And you've got different reasons, you know, that you would have started even from day one, where you are going to place yourself, what sort of monetary gain you're going to want to have for your business, who do you want around in your business, who do you want to represent your business, etc., etc. Okay? So some of us would have had ideas coming in while we were still working for somebody else, so we may have modeled how their business is like or is running or whichever way, or some other people are learning from courses or some other people are learning from mentors. It depends. It all depends how you are presenting yourself and how you, you're looking at growing your business, all right? But most business people will agree on one thing. It's absolutely amazing to become an entrepreneur. It's absolutely fantastic to become an entrepreneur. There's a myriad of reasons why you would be doing this. You know, every person has his own hopes and dreams. Every person has his own ways of wanting to provide value to the environment. And everybody has their own destiny, right? So as an entrepreneur, I suppose you know you've got your full control of your own destiny. You know, you know you're an innovator and you're helping other people be, do, and have a life that's, uh, you know, profitable and enjoyable. I see Joe Stacy has just tuned in. Um, yes, Joe Stacy, how are you going? Hope you're having a fantastic day, by the way. So as an entrepreneur, you're an innovator. You're here to solve problems. You've become part of a family. You probably have joined certain groups or you're probably following certain gurus or you've probably done certain courses, but maybe you haven't actually grown. You haven't actually expanded from where you started or you haven't actually had the impacts that you hoped you'd be getting maybe by the end of the year or by the, you know, by the end of whatever judgment or whatever yardstick you're putting yourself in. Guys, I, I would want to admit being small is beautiful. It's nice. It's cozy. You, you're in control of your environment. You're in control of your income. You're in control of the people that you work around with. And, you know, and slow and steady always wins the race. 
But at some point as an entrepreneur, you're going to want to think, how am I going to expand the influence that I'm, I'm having right now? How am I going to expand my product line? How am I going to you know, help as many people because you are paid in direct proportion to the value you bring into the marketplace. All right. If you stay small, how are you going to impact the many people that you have, um, you know, that you want to impact right in the comments below? I want you to type in a figure. How many people do you want your business to impact? I want to help upwards of a million you know kids to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable what is your number how many people do you and your business or your products want to impact so that you feel fulfilled and satisfied that you're actually doing something um you know with your life how many people what's the number just type it in there no no i'm, I'm not going to judge you or anything i just want to see the number that you think you're going to impact joel says one million that's doable that's a number that can actually be done because, you know, every, um, you know, with the six degrees of separation, if you reach out to at least five different people every single day, you will reach a million people after two years. All right. So inch by inch, row by row, they will be. That's how the garden grows. A lot of us maybe don't know how to actually grow further than where we are right now. You know, you know, while such. Some of this wisdom may come from, you know, you know, you know, memories that other people around us do not see the vision. Other people might not see what our, our, our um, you know, uh, what our capabilities are. It's, it can be awfully frustrating when you're trying to talk to people around you and how your ambitions as a business owner are actually determined by the people that are around you. Do you know that? The, the, you are an average of the five people that you hang around with, okay? Omari Alex says one million plus people. Yes, man, that's, that's amazing, all right? You might be ambitious, but your environment is probably crippling your style, all right? So if you want to take your company to the next level of growth and profitability, first of all, look at what's been working in your business and how can you actually make double of that? Steven Seaton says uh, 10 million. 10 million is possible. You know why? Because every one of those people will be riding in your boats. All right. So that is actually uh, possible. And sometimes you might be thinking to yourself, maybe my product is not big enough for impact. Do you know, you might be working on a one to one sort of person person advice or service that you have to be serving one person at a time and maybe your business right now it doesn't have inventory or maybe you you're struggling to pay rent or you are afraid that if you grow bigger you're gonna need employees and that may seem like it takes away your money it that's not true most of the work that we are actually doing can be outsourced most of the work that we are actually doing right now, you know, you can have other smaller business people to partner with you. You can actually have other, um, you know, other smaller businesses to fulfill um, aspects of your business so that you grow and expand while you're continuously just doing what you are doing right now. My main business is SEO. I don't really go into web development. I don't really go into, um, you know, all, all that web design and stuff like that. But my company offers that as a service. How do I manage that? I outsource that work to somebody who's competent so that they look after that side of the business and I only just have to do the SEO. So look around you. Look at the people that you've partnered with. Look at the people that are in your um, territory, in your periphery. How can you complement each other's services? How can you complement each other's businesses? Look, Corinne, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. And uh, Stephen Sidden says, I've got 16 odd suppliers at best. Exactly. Find out what it is that you can do around with the people that you already have, that you already know. All right. You know, right now you might be going at the end of the year and your phone won't stop ringing off the hook. Customers keep wanting, um, you know, com coming back for more. And you're just afraid that as a small business, you might, you, 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 you might fail to plan your expansion. And you might be afraid of growing into that business because, man, that means lots more responsibilities. You know, some of us are burning out just trying to juggle everything themselves. And you spend so much time hiring the wrong people to help you just so that you can keep, you, you can keep your profits down. 
Why don't you just outsource that to somebody who's competent, who already has the resources and the manpower to actually do a better job than what you're doing right now? All right? So at the end of the day, look at who is around you. How can they complement your business? How can they actually help you be, do, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable? And Nicole, don't worry, man. You can always watch the replay. All right? Well, fortunately... I've already been working around with people that are looking to expand and scale their business. And I can also give you a few tips that I'm helping them to actually grow their small business into new heights. First of all, without, you know, sacrificing their, their family life. Second of all, without uh, sacrificing their business profitability and without losing peace of mind. And Venita Pillai says, just seem to have a problem to start my coaching business. Vinita, we can have a chat and figure out where you are, really. Why would you want to be coaching other people when you cannot start your own? So let's talk about that and see how you can actually uh, be of help to people that you want to help. All right. So maybe right now you might be a, a product based business. You might be a service-based business, whichever way it is. And, um, you know, you just want to really focus on one product or one service and then market the hell out of that product, sell it, promote it, and, and, and promote it to everybody else so that you can increase sales on that one thing. Some of us are trying to have 500 products at, at, at the same time. It gives you overwhelm. People then don't know you for one particular thing. You then become, you know, you're no longer a meaningful specific. You are just a wandering generality. All right. So while it's tempting to swing, you know, for fences and try to be all things to everyone, it's often less risky and more profitable to actually just pick one product. Find that one thing that you can actually execute well and just stay, stay on track and stay in your product lane. Because if you're going to come to the market today as a, as a, you know, as a coach, and then tomorrow you come in as, as, a, as a hairdresser, and then the next day you come in as a boxer, people will not know how to stick around with you and you won't grow. You won't grow. I've got a, I've got a landscape, um, I've got a landscape business that I, um, you know, used to do their social media for, but his name is, his name is Richard. Uh, he works in the Richmond area right there and he's a landscaper. But you know what he actually started doing because he was getting a bit older. He started a home-based business, um, of, of actually doing dog waste removal. And it's quite funny. We, we, we started calling him Dr. Cooper, uh, Pupa Scuba. You know, he got tired of his landscaping business and then he just went on picking up dog poop from, from around his customers' lawns and the city council area there. Now he's got contracts with the city council, um, you know, in Richmond. He's got contracts with, with a few neighbors around him. All he just does is pick up dog poop. So instead, instead of him going out and, and splurging on, on, on a retail, um, you know, storefront or some expensive Yellow Pages ad or some AdWords or whatever, you know, Richard just actually just decided to use his truck as his personal um, advertising vehicle. He just decorated it as a Dalmatian and, and then wrote on it, Dr. Pooper Scuba. And he put magnetic business cards around it. And now he's using his truck as a moving billboard. And that's all he does in his 70s. He stuck to one product. You know, he went around and he joined groups and through word of mouth, you know, um, you know, and, 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 and through word of mouth advertising, what was once a nightmare of his business trying to reach all his customers. Now he's busy serving hundreds of customers and he's got more than a thousand pickups every single week. Yeah. And thanks to this success of just sticking to the one product, he's not just, you know, planning to phase out all the landscaping he was doing before. And he's just now focusing on his poop, poop scooping business full time. <clears throat> First of all, it works with his lifestyle. He's old now. All he has to do is just go and do an hour of, you know, scooping the poop. And, you know, this has been a year that he's, he's, he's actually <laughs> gaining profits. Can you imagine? He's stuck to his product. 
And he, he, because of his age now, he actually says it's three times easier than landscaping. And, you know, he can do it until he can't walk anymore. Do you know what I mean? So you want to just really see what are you good at? What can you do without, you know, violating your lifestyle? And then just 10x that, multiply that seven times, eight times, and just be focused on the one thing that you can do. Some of us are trying to grab everything. That's why at the end of the day, you burn out. Richard, he's just picking up dog poo. He was trying to be a landscaper, but with his age, he can't do it. How else can you expand if you've got a really small business? Expand your product line to offer complementary products and services. Like I was mentioning earlier on, if you're a web designer or web developer, partner with people that do SEO, partner with people that do graphic design, partner with marketers, partner with, uh, partner with brand designers. They already have your customers. You know, once you already know what's your one thing and you've hit that equilibrium of you really, really like this product or this service, don't miss out on an opportunity to bring out sort of related um, items to diversify your product line. Back in the days, bigger companies had the budgets to hire different departments. But what's happening these days is you have your own small business, but if you collaborate with a lot of people around, you know, you enhance your product line and you become a one thing to all your customers uh, combined. Not only does it give your, your, your customers, you know, a wider selection of, of things that can, can, you, you can provide, but it also makes your products more appealing because your customers don't have to go to Jack, to Sally, to Richard, to Norman to just get the one thing done. It's all under one roof. Do you know what I mean? So you can now just package it as one item, you know, as long as you've got agreements and, you know, sort of arrangements with the other providers. You know, I've got a client who used, um, who, who, who creates baby clothes and she calls it contemporary baby. You know, she does it from a home, um, in the Western suburbs there. And, and what she, she used to do is, you know, she, she was ma making colorful blurts of clothes for new bones. I started working with her when I was buying clothes for my little girl from her. And now she's expanded that product line after talking to her because I told her kids grow do you know what I mean? So now she has started a community where, where those ladies that have kids who have outgrown their clothes, they exchange the clothes in, in between and they sell them secondhand and then she gets a commission. So those clothes get a bigger life cycle instead of them just being thrown away or being, um, you know, put away like that. And also she's now putting in go along products like, you know, little girls would need little, little things like this, little fascinators, little accessories, etc., etc. And Mark Murray, how's it going, man? I'm just talking about how you can actually expand your business in 2018. And now instead of just selling, you know, contemporary baby clothes, she's also s selling blankets, bibs, gift baskets for those that don't know what to get their kids. Do you know what I mean? Her retail customers have, have enjoyed a lot more from the gift giving options than buying one on one from her. She's expanded that way. That's her thing. Find out what it is that you can do to enhance what you're already offering because your customers are always searching for more from other people. But why not, you know, utilize that base you already have because it's difficult to get newer customers than to actually get the ones that you already have. Jefferson Uzoma, thanks for tuning in, buddy. All right, so you need to figure out how can you enhance or increase the budget or the, the spend that every customer has, um, you know, within, within your product. Like I said, it's a whole lot cheaper, guys, and you know this. It's a lot cheaper to find, um, you know, to, 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 to sell to your older customers than to find new ones because they don't quite know you, like you, or trust you as yet. So if you expand your product line and you collaborate with other people that are already within your niche, 
Don't have a scarcity mindset and thinking that people are your competition. There is no competition out there. Every single person has got different gifts, different ways of appealing to the market. So no one is your competition. In, in, in any case, you should actually collaborate with those that are actually selling the same things with you so that you give your customers a better experience. Those people that think there's a competition, first is their ego and they're selfish and they have no value to offer to their customers. It's all about them. So you can actually really boost revenues by selling a lot more um, you know, of your existing products and services to clients that you already have. Andrew Ande, thank you so much for tuning in. And also guys, um, connect with Andrew. He's just launched a new app uh, so you can get rid of business cards. I've got a whole bunch on here that probably I should throw away or just use his app. Andrew, can you just give us a link to how we um, can get a hold of your app? That's 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 how winning is done. All right. Mark Murray said, Richard Branson said that too. Oh, yeah, exactly. So you can actually boost your revenues by selling more to your, I mean, of your existing products to people that are already buying from you anyway. You know, one easy way to do this is to actually go through, um, you know, all, all, all the services that you can provide, all the people that you can, you, 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 you've worked with and find out what else can you provide? What else can you give? Because the more somebody has already purchased from you, they become a loyal customer. Do you know what I mean? So you, you, you give them, you know, a punch card or whatever loyalty program you can create around them so you can retain them and you can learn from them so that you actually know what it is exactly that you can keep giving them or you can keep, um, you know, offering them. You know, so, you know, you might be maybe a saloon, a hair saloon or a car wash or, you know, an art store or you might be some sort of a home based business that really needs continuity. How are you keeping the customers that you already have? You know, besides those people already buying from other, you know, companies already. Search who they're purchasing from after they've left your shop or your business. And then just partner with that person so that you keep those people within your periphery. All right. One other thing that's stunting a lot of people's growth is being selfish and having a scarcity mindset. And not wanting to let go and outsourcing some of the work. I bet you, you're not really good at graphic design. You're not really good at accounting. You're not really good at web design. You, you just hire a freelancer or an intern or an independent contractor or even your kids or your, or your people that are around you. Do you know what I mean? It actually frees up a lot of your time and you know time is money. So it frees up a lot of cash flow by you just fixating on one thing that you don't know how to do. Find out what your one thing is and then outsource the rest of the stuff so that you're looking professional to, 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 to you know, your, your, your customers and you never run short. A lot of people are burning out because we are trying to do everything. Outsource most of these things to independent contractors. It's not as expensive as, as you think. Do you know what I mean? I'm working with this other guy um, who, who, who operates, um, it's like a directory business where he advertises smaller businesses within his area. And um, yeah, he's actually using those businesses to write content on his blog. You know why? Because then they also want the exposure. All right. So he's using them to create content and he's using that content to, um, you know, what do you call it? To actually get in front of the people that are going to be wanting business from them. And Andrew says, too true, focus on your strengths and top 20% of your clients. Exactly. And once you know who your clients are, try and always be creating complimentary products for them and then grow. Just grow from there. When you bring outside help, guys, it gives you, um, you know, somebody else to also bounce off ideas and strategies off of. You know, because sometimes we might think we know it all. Sometimes we might think that this is, this is the best it can be. The reason why your business is not growing is because that's your end of thinking capacity. ETC, end of thinking capacity. If you bring in somebody else, they'll be like, oh, why don't you sell to this market? Why don't you open up to this market? And then it opens up your mind yet again. So you can bounce off ideas off other people. It actually prevents you from feeling like you're going at it alone. That's the reason why a lot of people fail in business because they feel like they're not being supported. But the, it's the other way around. You are not reaching out to people to actually help you within your business. 
Also, one other thing, if your business does not have a web, a, a mobile friendly website in 2018, what the hell are you doing? What the hell, man? All right, create a really good, um, you know, website that's mobile friendly, and then you can advertise your company so that you can sell products online. Andrew says, any freelancer hiring trips Upwork? Um, Upwork is really good. I've used Upwork, uh, freelancer.com. Fiverr is also a really good one for really quick um, jobs. And some of the groups that we are in already, they would help you. All right. So think, you know, thanks to the internet, guys, it's no longer necessary to, to open up a physical store so that you can reach more retail customers. All right, it's no longer necessary. Just make sure you've created a really good website that people are happy to share. Your stuff, that people are happy to share your stuff. You know, for marketers, you know, like me, it's, it, and people that have specialty products, you know, maybe you've got books, you've got collectibles or whatever gourmet food they're creating these days. A web-based business helps people to actually know what you're talking about. You can now reach those millions of people you guys were talking about earlier on. All right. So the millions of, um, you know, shoppers around the world, you know, they, they, you don't need to be paying rent. And Nicole, yes, that was that was the cue. I hope I hope people figured that part out. And guys, if you're getting value from this video, I only got three minutes left. Please share this video. For me, it's not a popularity contest anymore. I'm just really dropping down a few valuable points because I want to see you guys in 2018. All right. I want you to expand your mind. I want you to expand your horizons. You know, in the process, you 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 are now joining forces with with other businesses and promoting your company in 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 in, in, in the process. So partner up with other guys. There's no competition. There is no competition. It's just your scarcity mindset that's limiting you from actually reaching out to other people that can help you. You know, be do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions as to what, what can you specifically do for your business in 2018? And also, take stock of what you've been doing this year, all right? Were you very, um, were you visible on social media? Were you using email marketing? What marketing were you using? What marketing were you using this year? And, you know, did you... Were you offered to speak at a stage? Did you teach a class? How did you market your, your, your business this year? Find out what you did and go out there and double that if it worked and ditch it if it didn't work. All right? See, marketing your home-based business doesn't involve you spending a lot of money on like newspaper ads or yellow pages or whatever. Just offer value. Because you're paid in direct proportion to the value that you're offering to the marketplace. People are out there looking for information. People are out there looking for content. Are you and your business giving out that content so that people get to know, like, and trust you? Yeah? All right. So you, it doesn't mean you have to have a big budget so you have a radio or a TV spot. This, what I'm doing, Facebook Live, is free as fuck. Go in and just show your face, show your people that you can actually do it and actually help them by helping them. Make sure you have such a strategy for your growth in 2018. All right. And sometimes you don't really have to, um, you know, you don't really have to extend, you know, you don't have to do 30 minutes. All you just really have to do is reach out and show people that you're there and tell them what you can help them with, etc., etc. And yes, like what Steven says, create more content and Mark Murray. <laughs> oh, exactly. All right. Reach out. The world has become, you know, start thinking outside your 24 hour box. What are you doing? In the time that your customers are probably um, up and in the other side of, of, um, of, the, of the world. Is your content speaking to them right at that time? 
You know? And if your business has been doing so well and your business has been really, really, um, has got systems in place and you, you know you can replicate that business, turn it into a franchise. Expand that way. You know, the, the only question you've got to ask yourself is, can your business be converted and somebody use it without having to ask you a few questions? And if that's the process, then go ahead and do it, guys. Nothing can stop you. Right now, Facebook is making it harder and harder for people to be poor. You can sell your stuff on Marketplace. You can go into Messenger, create a bot, whatever it is that you can do. Just find out what worked in 2017 and just really, really, really go in and create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. You guys know that I'm always here to help you guys out. You know what I mean? Because my mission is to make sure that when you start your business, you are profitable from the get-go with less stress. All right? All you got to do is just really show up and say, yes, I'm the one. I want to be doing this and this is what I'm made for. There's a lot to be enjoying about entrepreneurship, but I don't think some of us are going all the way. But in any case, those that will be, I'll be seeing you in 2018. Those that failed the rest, please show me your participation trophies because I don't think they're giving them anywhere. All right, Mark, we can talk about that a little bit later on. It's something that I'm also trying out for my business, but I really like connecting with people. In the meantime, if you haven't shared this video, why not? Are you that selfish? It's not a popularity contest for me. Please just share this video so that it also helps me create more videos and, um, you know, reach more people so that we can help them start, scale and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, see you again tomorrow. As you know, every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we've got a really different topic that's designed to help you market scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And those that I'm going to be seeing in 2018, Aluta Continua, guys. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. And yes, 